Well, well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Johan Lorenzo here. If you've been following the stock market over the past week, you would have noticed it's getting pretty dang bloody out there once again. And of course, this has a lot to do with my main man, Mr. Jerome Powell. In a recent meeting, Jerome Powell basically came out and said, And we're down we go. And that's a true story, my guy. Reading between the lines, Jerome Powell is telling us we're gonna have to endure a little more pain and the market simply did not like that. Here's a quick little snippet from his speech where he goes on to say, restoring price stability will take some time and requires using our tools forcefully, ay ay ay, to bring demand and supply into better balance. Reducing inflation is likely to require a sustained period of below trend growth. That's gonna be interesting. Moreover, there will very likely be some softening of labor market conditions, while higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. The stock market did not like that right there, guys. These are the unfortunate costs of reducing inflation, but a failure to restore price stability would mean far greater pain. That speech right there is the reason why the market is selling off and that is the reason why I'm bringing you today's video. Today, I'm gonna give you guys five super safe dividend stocks for you to park your money in for the long term. So no matter what happens in the market, you still get paid your consistent dividend payments each and every single month. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before we start chucking out ticker symbols and talking about different companies here, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the key factors we took into consideration when picking each one of these individual dividend stocks. First thing we're looking at here is free cash flow. We wanna see a positive free cash flow in each of the last 10 years. Free cash flow is the cash a company generates after taking into consideration cash outflows that support its operations and maintain its capital assets. In other words, free cash flow is the cash left over after the company pays for its operating expenses and capital expenditures. Free cash flow is an important measurement since it shows how efficient a company is at generating cash. Investors use free cash flow to measure whether a company might have enough cash for dividends or share buybacks. In addition, the more free cash flow a company has, the better it is placed to pay down debt and pursue opportunities that can enhance its business making it an attractive choice for investors. The next thing we're looking for is a low or very low payout ratio. The payout ratio is also useful for assessing a dividend's sustainability. Companies are extremely reluctant to cut dividends since it can drive the stock price down and reflect poorly on management abilities. If a company's payout ratio is over 100%, it is returning more money to shareholders than it is earning and it will probably be forced to lower the dividend or stop paying it altogether. So that right there is one of the main reasons we want a low or very low payout ratio. Up next, we're looking for an uninterrupted dividend streak. This basically speaks for itself. We want the company to have 20 years or more of consistently paying a dividend. And to piggyback off that, we want a dividend safety score of very safe. By the way, this will be provided by Simply Safe Dividends, and that is a software that I use to do my research and organize my portfolio. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, guys. I just really like their product and I think it's worth checking it out if you haven't. You can get a free two-week trial to check it out and mess around with it for yourself. Just go to www.simplysafedividends.com. Alrighty, so moving on. And last but not least, we want these companies to have at least a 20-year dividend growth streak. And in that dividend growth streak, we want to see an average annual dividend growth greater than 5%. Coming in first, we have ticker symbol CB. Chubb Limited. This is a property and casualty insurance company and they are in the financial sector of the market. Chubb is currently priced at $189.99 per share. At the moment, they have a dividend yield of 1.75% and they currently have a dividend safety score of 99, which makes them a very safe play for dividend investing. Their payout ratio is a very nice 22% and they have an uninterrupted dividend growth streak of 28 years. Their 20 year dividend growth rate averages out to 9% growth per year. I'll take that. If you currently own shares of Chubb or you're thinking about owning shares, you can expect to get paid 83 cents for every share you own or every share you're about to own. And you'll receive this payment four times a year because they are a quarterly paying company. Their free cash flow per share looks great along with their earnings per share. 
Those two categories there have actually scaled pretty nicely over the last couple of years. Their total sales look good and so do the shares outstanding. This company must be doing a good amount of share buybacks because the shares have been steadily decreasing since 2017. Next we have ticker symbol LOW, Lowe's. If you happen to live under a rock, this is a home improvement retail company and they're in the consumer discretionary sector of the market. Lowe's is currently priced at $197.22 per share. They're sporting a dividend yield of 2.13% and they have a dividend safety score of 93, which also makes them a very safe dividend play. Lowe's payout ratio is a very low one, sitting at 27%. That's a very comfortable spot for the company. They have an uninterrupted dividend growth streak of 59 years, with their dividend growth rate averaging 24% for the last 20 years. That's insane. Imagine getting a 24% pay raise at your job every year. You'd be one happy camper. Lowe's right now pays a dividend of $1.05 for every share you own. They are also a quarterly paying company, so you'll receive this payment four times a year. Their free cash flow per share is also looking great along with their earnings per share. The total sales for the company have been consistently trending upwards, and this is from as far back as we can see here, which is 2013. Their shares outstanding have also decreased very nicely. Year after year, as you can see, there are less and less shares in the open market. And if you're a shareholder of Lowe's, that's exactly what you wanna see. Up next, we have ticker symbol SNA, Snap-on. This is a fan favorite of a few of you guys, and I know my buddy Ryan Williams, he's the one that put me onto this, so Ryan, big shout out to you, my brother. This company makes all types of different tools, and they're in the industrial sector of the market. Snap-on is currently priced at $228.26 per share. That adds up to a dividend yield of 2.6%. They have a dividend safety score of 99. That makes them yet another very safe dividend play to add to the list. The payout ratio is 34%, and they have an uninterrupted dividend streak of 29 years. Their dividend growth rate equals 9% per year over the last 20 years. Snap-on is currently paying a dividend of $1.42 for every share you own. They are also a quarterly paying company, so you'll receive that payment four times a year. And if you haven't noticed yet, by just owning these first three dividend stocks, you are now collecting a dividend every single month. Snap-on also has a solid free cash flow per share, along with a very solid earnings per share to go with it. Their total sales have scaled nicely as well, and their shares outstanding are also declining year over year throughout the last handful of years. Coming in at number four, we have ticker symbol AFL, Aflac. I'm sure you've seen that little white duck on TV and you've come across a few of their commercials from time to time, but in case you haven't, <laughs> Aflac is a life and health insurance company and they are in the financial sector of the market. Aflac shares are currently going for $60.13 a share. Their dividend yield is 2.66% and they're rocking a dividend safety score of 99. And that adds them to the list of very safe dividend stocks to invest in. Aflac's payout ratio is currently 25% and they have an uninterrupted dividend growth streak of 39 years with a dividend growth rate averaging 14% a year over the last 20 years. That's a bad boy right there. They are currently paying shareholders a dividend of 40 cents for every share they hold. Aflac is also a quarterly payer, so every three months you'll be getting paid from Aflac. Free cash flow per share is looking decent, and you can check off their earnings per share as well. They're looking very decent there too. Total sales look good, very consistent throughout the last decade, and their shares outstanding also look good, showing a nice steady downtrend year over year. And last but not least, we have ticker symbol J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson. This is obviously a huge pharmaceutical company, and they also sell a ton of other things like skincare products and over-the-counter medications. Johnson & Johnson is in the healthcare sector of the market. They are currently going for $162.43 a share. With a current dividend yield of 2.78%, they also have a dividend safety score of 99. I guess you can just go ahead and add that little sucker to the list of very safe dividend stocks. Johnson & Johnson has a payout ratio of 43%, and they have an amazing uninterrupted dividend growth streak of 59 years. Their average annual dividend growth rate is 9% per year throughout the last 20 years. If you own shares of Johnson & Johnson, you can expect a dividend payment of $1.13 every three months. They're also a quarterly paying company. The free cash flow per share is looking super solid. And as you can already guess, their earnings per share are in the same boat. They've both scaled upwards throughout the last decade. Total sales are looking very decent year over year, and so are the shares outstanding. Nice steady decline throughout the last decade. 
Guys, if those aren't good enough reasons to possibly invest in these companies, Look at the returns these dividend stocks have had throughout the last 10 years. Chubb has given you a return of 153% in the last 10 years. Lowe's has given you a return of 596.4%. Snap-on is another one, 198% return in the last 10 years. Taking a look at Aflac, in the last 10 years, they've given you a 149% return. And right there, right behind it, you have Johnson & Johnson. In the last 10 years, they've given you a return of 139.2%. These are dividend stocks that not only you can count on the dividend payment, but you can count on your shares appreciating as well. When you compare these five heavy hitters right here to other famous dividend stocks, they blow them right out of the water. Let's take a look at 3M, for example. I know 3M is a favorite for many people, I personally don't like them for this exact reason right here. Within the last 10 years, they've only appreciated 34.5%. Let's take a look at another famous dividend stock that's in the same boat. I will never invest in this company. I know a lot of you guys like it. It's personally not for me. And here we go again, Altra Group, ticker symbol MO. In the last 10 years, they've given you a 31.6% return. That's garbage. I will never touch that. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you can invest in something and it doesn't go your way. But me knowing what I know about these two companies right here, I will never touch them. Another one to that list, look at Campbell Soup. This was a pretty famous company. One of my buddies, another YouTuber, really liked them for a while and he finally cut his losses and moved on. But Campbell Soup right here has given you a return of 44.6% in the last 10 years. When you compare these five dividend stocks to the ones that we just looked at, Man, it's not even a competition. They just blow them right out of the water. If you happen to own any one of these stocks in your portfolio, drop me a comment down below and let me know which one it is. You might actually even own a couple of them or you might not own any one of them at all. Regardless, drop me a comment down below and let me know what you guys think of these stocks. I'm pretty curious to see what you guys think about them. I really do think they're at least watch list worthy. As always guys, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button for me. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I wanna thank you all for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.